All right, let's tackle a big one today. A question that's really at the core of how so much of the modern internet actually works. What in the world is a microservice architecture? You know, have you ever been deep in a Netflix binge or maybe adding way too much stuff to your cart on Amazon and you just stop and wonder, how do these gigantic websites manage everything at once without just falling over? I mean, think about it. They're handling streaming, payments, recommendations, shipping. How does it all stay up and running? Well, the secret sauce, the answer to how they tame all that complexity, it comes down to one powerful idea, microservices. So what are we even talking about here? A microservice architecture is basically a style of building software. Instead of creating one giant single program that does everything, you break it down into a bunch of tiny independent services. And here's the most important part. Each of those little services is designed to do just one job and to do that one job incredibly well. Okay, I know that might still sound a little techy, a little abstract. So let's make it super simple with an analogy I think we can all get behind. Let's talk about a restaurant. Just think about how any good restaurant runs. You don't have one person doing everything, right? You have specialists. The chef is in the kitchen preparing the food. That's their whole world. The waiter takes your order and brings it to you. The cashier handles the money. And, you know, if you're ordering in, the delivery person is the one who gets it to your door. Each person has a very specific job, but they all have to work together to make your dinner happen. And this is where the light bulb really goes on. A traditional app, what we call a monolith, is like having one single person trying to do all of those jobs. Cooking, serving, taking payments, delivering. Can you imagine the chaos? It would be a complete mess. Super inefficient. But microservices, that's our well-run restaurant, with all those specialized roles working together smoothly and efficiently. That's the whole idea right there. All right, analogy time is over. Let's get under the hood and look at the actual nuts and bolts of how this whole thing works in the tech world. So here's what makes these services truly independent. Each one has its own separate code. That means different teams can work on different services without tripping over each other. They can even have their own private databases. And this is huge. Each service can be updated and deployed all by itself. So you can fix the payment service without touching the rest of the app. And how do they talk to each other? Well, they use something called APIs. You can think of them as the digital waiters passing messages and requests between all the different services. And this, this is maybe the biggest selling point. It's all about resilience. Imagine you're on Amazon and the service that gives you product recommendations suddenly breaks. In the old monolithic world, that one little error could bring the entire website crashing down. But with microservices, who cares? The recommendation part might be gone for a minute, but the rest of the app just keeps chugging along. You can still search, you can still add to your cart, and you can still buy things. It's an absolute game changer. But look, nothing in technology is a perfect solution, right? There's no silver bullet. It's always, always about trade-offs. So let's get real about the benefits versus the challenges. Okay, on the plus side, you get incredible scalability. If your video streaming service is getting hammered, you just scale that one part up, not the whole application. You get amazing flexibility. The payment team can use one programming language, and the search team can use a totally different one if it's better for the job. We just talked about resilience, which is massive, and all this leads to faster development because small, independent teams can just move faster. But, and this is a big but, on the flip side, it introduces a ton of complexity. Now you have all these little pieces to manage. That means you need really strong monitoring to see what's going on. And because all these services are talking to each other over a network, you can get little delays, something we call latency. So this all sounds great in theory, but who's actually doing this stuff? Let's take a look at microservices out there in the wild. Netflix is the poster child for microservices. Just think about their app. The part that streams video to you has to be bulletproof but it's a totally different job from the billing system, which has to be super secure, or the recommendation engine, which is all about data. By splitting them up, Netflix can pour resources into making sure streaming is perfect on a Friday night without ever worrying it's gonna mess up someone's bill. And then there's Amazon. The scale they operate at is just mind boggling, and it would be literally impossible without this approach. The team working on the product catalog can release new features all day long, and they will never ever interfere with the team that's processing payments. Every single piece, shipping, reviews, the shopping cart, it's like its own little mini application, all working together. Or think about Uber. 
It's this crazy real-time ballet of moving parts. The algorithm that matches you with a driver is one service. The system that calculates your fare and takes your payment is another. The push notification that says your driver is arriving is yet another service. So if for some reason the notification system has a little hiccup, it doesn't matter. The core of the business, getting you a ride and paying for it, still works perfectly. That is resilience in action. So look, if you take just one thing away from all of this, let it be this. Microservices are all about breaking up one giant, messy application into a team of smaller, independent, specialized pieces. And that's what makes these huge, complex apps we use every day actually manageable, scalable, and tough to break. Which leaves us with one final, really important question. Now that we know how powerful microservices can be, when would the opposite, that single giant application, the monolith, when would that actually be the better choice? It's something to think about, and a question we'll definitely dig into next time.